Granger believes the water in this earliest, oldest section of the cave could offer an explanation why this cave is so enormous. Highly erosive, exceptionally acidic water acting on very pure limestone might be the answer. To confirm his theory, Granger needs to carry out a test. Okay, so right now I'm taking a pH measure. I have a pH probe here. We have to leave it in the water for a little while to equilibrate. That'll tell us the, the pH of this water. pH levels range from 0 to 14. The lower the pH number, the stronger the acid. To be out of the ordinary, Granger is looking for a reading somewhere lower than 7, which is neutral. On the surface, tropical rainstorms deluge the vegetation and seep down through the soil. On the way, the water picks up carbon dioxide, which makes it acidic. High levels of acidity would make the water flowing into Mountain River Cave more effective at boring its way through the rock. All right, so my pH should be uh, finished now, and we have about uh, pH 7.5. So that's pretty typical, maybe a little bit on the low side. The results of the test surprise Granger. The water here is not unusually acidic. This can't be the explanation for the cave's epic size. There's something strange going on here, something which he needs to discover. But finding the right answer to this huge puzzle is his biggest problem. Granger needs to dig deeper. The explanation could lie in how efficient the river is at eroding the limestone. To work this out, he must measure how much dissolved calcium carbonate there is in the water. This will tell him how much rock erodes daily. I'm going to add some acid in here until the liquid turns yellow. And then the way this kit works, I can just read off from the syringe how much calcite is in this water. One more drop. So now it's yellow. Okay, we've got it. We only have about 62 milligrams per liter. This means that every liter of water that passes by here carries 62 milligrams of dissolved rock, about the size of a baseball each second. It sounds a staggering amount, but for a cave of this size, it counts for nothing. Like the 7.5 pH, the 62 milligrams per liter result is only surprising because it's so ordinary and unexceptional. It's exactly the result a geologist might expect to find in any limestone cave river. These results don't help Granger understand why this cave is such a monster. His answers must lie deeper within the cave. You know, I've got to rethink my plans a little bit. I've got to think about what this tells me about the cave evolution. We'll keep our eyes out and see what we find. The team need to rest and set up camp. They only have enough food for six days, enough to get to the wall and back. Rehydrating and replacing lost calories has to be carefully managed. Dr. Hugh Mu Wen, a geomorphologist, and Dr. Tai Mu Wen, a biologist, both from Hanoi University, help Limburg with the organization. Hopefully the other porters will take all the other bags to our underground camp. <laughs> this is a great trip, it's an amazing group. Everybody has pulled more than their weight. Betcher goes deeper and further into the cave looking for life. And like Granger, she's getting frustrated in her search. I expected to see um, a very old fossil cave with lots of dry passages. A cave of this size would normally have many areas where water can't reach, giving various life forms a survival niche. But here, Betcher is discovering that the water is literally washing all traces of life away. Far from her dream of finding undiscovered species, Betcher only sees a barren wilderness. It's a bit of a shame, I had great expectations, but with the wet flooding, I um, had to rethink, basically, my approach. The team is exhausted and settle down for their first night inside the cave. The next morning, they push on, 
over a kilometre into the cave. Darrell Granger has explored some of the largest caves in the world. But this one is about to deliver something he's never seen before. Deep in the heart of Mountain River Cave lie the magical and mysterious domes. Wow. Here, the cave roof has collapsed inwards, allowing sunlight to flood in, connecting above and below ground with the vital ingredients of life, water and light. Man. This is the world's biggest cave. The rest of this stuff is just, is just building up to it. That is amazing. That's one and a half kilometers away. That is huge. <laughs>